एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर द न्यू यूजीसी करिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम Every time you go to the supermarket or buy something, we do not sit down with the person selling the goods and enter into a proper formal contract where in terms and conditions are specifically mentioned and we are signing that document. But instead, what are we doing? हम बस पेमेंट करते हैं हम गुड्स की डिलीवरी लेते हैं और हम घर आ जाते हैं But does that mean that whatever transaction that has happened is not of the way of a contract? No. That is still a valid contract. And that is why the government came up with the Sale of Goods Act that specifically deals with these special contracts that pertain to sale of goods so now if two people have entered into a sale of goods they have entered into a contract of sale but what are they actually supposed to do in that contract of sale well in today's lecture we will be discussing how is the contract of sale supposed to be performed If you want to study this topic in detail refer to the book by S John Publishing and Vikas Publishing House link is provided in the description box Dear students I am Kanika Kaushik and I welcome you to S John Academy where today we will be discussing the topic performance of a contract of sale So the topic for this video lecture is performance of a contract of sale so the performance of a contract it basically refers to the fulfillment or execution of certain obligations that arise by way of that contract so here it is basically given under part 4 of the sale of goods act 1930 so the duties of the buyer and seller they are very important when we talk about the performance of a contract and they are enumerated under section 30 of the sale of goods act so here it is the duty of the seller to deliver the goods and in return it is the duty of the buyer to actually accept those goods and make the payment for those particular goods So section 31 states it is the duty of the seller to deliver the goods and of the buyer to accept and pay for them in accordance with the terms of the contract of the sale. So payment and delivery they are concurrent conditions. So when I am saying they are concurrent conditions iska matlab ye hai ki the moment the buyer is willing to make the payment the seller should also pass on the delivery unless the contract otherwise specifies. Jab aap supermarket jaate ho aur aap payment karte ho is it the case that the goods arrive at a later date or you bring the goods along with you? Well, हम पेमेंट करते हैं एंड एट द सेम टाइम वी टेक द डिलीवरी एंड दिस इज वट सेक्शन थर्टी टू इज एक्चुअली एसेंशियली ट्राइंग टू से दैट पेमेंट एंड डिलीवरी द सपोज टू गो साइमल्टेनियसली एंड द सपोज टू बी कॉन्करेंट कंडीशन सो द टेक्स ऑफ सेक्शन थर्टी टू स्टेट्स दैट अनलेस अदर वाइज अग्रीड डिलीवरी ऑफ द गुड एंड पेमेंट ऑफ द प्राइस आर कॉन्करेंट कंडीशन दैर इज टू से द सेलर शैल बी रेडी एंड विलिंग टू गिव पोजेशन ऑफ द गुड्स टू द बायो इन एक्सचेंज ऑफ द प्राइस and the buyer shall be ready and willing to pay the price in exchange of the possession of the goods so in a sense when the buyer is ready and willing to pay the price the seller should also pass on the delivery and give the possession to the buyer and similarly the moment the seller is willing to transfer the possession of the goods to the buyer the buyer should also be in a position to make the payment of the price so now what is delivery it is section 33 that defines delivery delivery of goods sold may be made by doing anything which the party who agrees shall be treated as delivery or which has the effect of putting the goods in the possession of the buyer or of any person authorized to hold them on his behalf so in a sense it's not specifically supposed to be the buyer and the seller directly interacting it can be a possibility aap ek particular good kharidne ke liye ja rahe hain for example you're going to an electronics showroom you choose a particular model of a television you make the payment and you say that your servant would be coming to the store collecting that particular tv and bringing it along with him so in a sense the seller is not making the delivery directly to the buyer but he is making the delivery to another person who is authorized in this behalf by the buyer so that would also amount to a valid delivery so now what is the effect of part delivery so part delivery if you want to understand in basic terms it's basically uh, the delivery of a certain portion of the goods and the remainder has not been delivered सो वॉट इज द केस जब आप आधे गुड्स को तो डिलीवर कर देते हो बट आपके आधे गुड्स बचे हुए हैं सो अ डिलीवरी ऑफ पार्ट ऑफ गुड्स इन प्रोग्रेस ऑफ द डिलीवरी ऑफ द होल हैज द सेम इफेक्ट फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ पासिंग द प्रॉपर्टी इन सच गुड्स एज अ डिलीवरी ऑफ द होल बट अ डिलीवरी ऑफ पार्ट ऑफ द गुड्स विद इन इंटेंशन ऑफ सिवियरिंग इट फ्रॉम द होल डिज नॉट ऑपरेट एज अ डिलीवरी ऑफ द रिमाइंडर 
यानी कि इसमें इंटेंशन बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इंटेंशन इन द सेंस कि अगर आपने पार्ट डिलीवरी करी और आपका इंटेंशन है कि आप फ्यूचर डिलीवरी में सारे के सारे गुड्स की डिलीवरी करोगे तब आप उसको होल्ड डिलीवरी मानेंगे बट इफ यूर इंटेंशन इज टू सिवियर द डिलीवरी ऑफ दोज पर्टिकुलर गुड्स दैट यू हैव डिलीवर्ड फ्रॉम द डिलीवरी दैट हैज नॉट टेकन प्लेस इन दैट केस इट वुड नॉट ऑपरेट एज अ डिलीवरी ऑफ द रिमाइंडर इज वेल सो लेट्स मूव टू सेक्शन थर्टी फाइव इट सेज बायर टू अप्लाई फॉर डिलीवरी दिस मीन्स दट अपार्ट फ्रॉम एनी एक्सप्रेस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट द सेलर ऑफ गुड्स इज नॉट बाउंड to deliver them until the buyer applies for delivery so in a sense uh, the buyer has to signify that he is willing to take the delivery unless the contract otherwise specifies so um there are certain rules that have been enumerated with respect to delivery section 36 deals with the rules pertaining to delivery and it basically talks about what would be the place of delivery what should be the time of sale when goods in possession of a third person are supposed to be delivered so demand of delivery is supposed to be at a reasonable hour and finally who will be bearing the expenses with respect to putting goods in a deliverable state and they basically supposed to be borne by the seller so section 36 subsection 1 talks about the place of delivery so whether it is for the buyer to take possession of the goods or for the seller to send them to the buyer is a question depending on each case on the contract express or implied between the parties so you cannot essentially come up with a straight jacket formula wherein you're trying to come up with a standard rule as to whether the buyer would be taking the delivery or the seller has to go and make an effort to pay the delivery so apart from any such contract goods sold are to be delivered at the place at which they are at the time of the sale and goods agreed to be sold are to be delivered at the place at which they are at the time of the agreement to sell or if not then in existence at the place at which they are manufactured or produced so in a sense either whether goods are actually present at that time or wherein it has been stipulated under the agreement to sell and if you're talking about certain future goods that means uncertain goods then they are supposed to be delivered at the time of their manufacturing or production so section 36 subsection 2 talks about the time of delivery It states that where under the contract of sale the seller is bound to send the goods to the buyer but no time for the same has been fixed the seller is bound to send them within a reasonable time now what is reasonable time it depends from industry to industry so for example if the industry deals with fast moving consumer goods these consumer goods tend to be perishable and the reasonable time would essentially imply that particular time when the goods are fit for consumption but there are certain industries like a uh, semi mining industry when in the entire process is very long and the delivery may even happen after 6 months so in a sense what is reasonable will depend upon the industry as well as the nature of the goods so the next rules are with respect to uh, when the goods are in possession of a third person so this subsection 3 states where the goods are at the time of sale are in the possession of a third person there is no delivery by seller to buyer unless and until such third person acknowledges to the buyer that he holds the good on his behalf provided that nothing in this section shall affect the operation of the issue or transfer of any document of title to the goods so in a sense the third person has to signify to the buyer that he is holding the goods on his behalf otherwise there would be no delivery so when you are making a demand for the delivery of the goods it has to be very specific that it has to be at a reasonable hour so you cannot expect the seller to make a delivery by calling him up at 1 am at night rather it should be especially with respect to delivery of goods you should make it at a reasonable hour and what is reasonable here would definitely also refer to how things are supposed to be there in that particular industry so what is reasonable in the medical sector where there are requirement of certain medicines or medical equipments even at late night then that particular time can be a reasonable hour but when you're talking about certain goods like buying a pen then calling somebody up at to at night to just see the delivery of pens would not be reasonable so again what is reasonable would be a question of fact and this question of fact will depend on the industry so now who would be bearing the expenses of putting the goods in a deliverable state so this states that unless otherwise agreed that means the parties have not made a reference to any other thing then the sale of goods act will apply and the expenses of and incidental to putting the goods into a deliverable state shall be borne by the seller so students as of now we have discussed what is the performance of a contract of sale specifically and it essentially we discussed how it is the duty of the buyer to accept the goods 
and pay the price thereof and it is the duty of the seller to make the delivery. We discussed what is delivery and we discussed the various rules that are governing the delivery of goods. So let's stop here for a short break and we'll catch up after this short break. Now quality learning is easily available at your doorstep. S. Chand Academy brings detailed lectures based on UGC curriculum as per the new education policy 2020. So do not forget to subscribe to the S. Chand Academy and access the wide world of knowledge conveniently sitting within the comfort of your home. Stay connected and keep watching S. Chand Academy. Happy learning! So dear students, welcome back to Estand Academy. Before going on the short break, we discussed how is the performance of a contract of sale supposed to be done, how it is the duty of the seller to make the delivery of the goods and how it is the duty of the buyer to accept those goods and pay the price thereof. And uske baad humne kya discuss kara? Humne discuss kara section 36 ke under jo jo rules hain with respect to how a delivery is supposed to be made. So now let us discuss certain situations wherein delivery of wrong quantity has been made. This is given under section 37. It states that when the quantity which is less than contracted has been given to the buyer, what would be the situation? It states where the seller delivers to the buyer a quantity of goods less than he contracted to sell. The buyer may reject them, but if the buyer accepts the goods so delivered, he shall pay for them at the contract rate. Say for example, you uh, enter into a contract with a seller with respect to say uh, seeking a delivery of 100 pence, but the seller was not in possession of 100 pence at that time. He only delivered 80 pence to you. So you have two options. Either you can reject the entire consignment, you can reject those 80 pence and say, I wanted 100 pence and you have not given me 100 pence, so that is why I am rejecting it. The second situation is that you are accepting those 80 pence provided by the seller. So now if you are making the rejection of the goods, you are not supposed to pay any price. But if you are accepting those 80 pence, you have to make the payment for those 80 pence based on the rate of the contract. So if for example your contract stated that you are purchasing 100 pence at the rate of 20, uh, at the rate of rupees 20 per pen. So here again if you are accepting those 80 pence, what are you going, going to do? You are going to make the payment for those 80 pence at the rate of rupees 20 per pen. So now what would be the situation where the quantity larger than contracted has been supplied? So subsection 2 states where the seller delivers to the buyer a quantity of goods larger than he contracted to sell. The buyer may accept the goods included in the contract and reject the rest or he may reject the whole. If the buyer accepts the whole of the goods so delivered, he shall pay for them at the contract rate. So again let's carry on with the same example. You contracted to buy 100 pence from a person A. Now what has A done? He has sent 120 pence to you. So you have three options. The first one is that you accept 100 pence, return the extra 20 pence. The second option with you is that you reject the entire consignment. You reject those 120 pence altogether. But there is the third option available with you wherein you are accepting all those 120 pence. So if you are accepting those 120 pence, you have to make the payment at the contract rate which essentially implies again rupees 20 per pen. So 20 into 120, that is how you're going to make the payment. So what happens when goods contracted are mixed with goods of a different description? So say for example, here you wanted 100 pence, but here the seller sent, instead of 100 pence, he sent 80 pence and 20 pencils. So what are you going to do in this situation? Let us have a look. So where the seller delivers to the buyer, the goods he contracted to sell mixed with goods of a different description, not included in the contract, the buyer may accept the goods which are in accordance with the contract and reject the rest or may reject the whole. So here you cannot accept those particular 20 pencils. Either you accept the pens and reject the pencils or you reject the entire consignment. So again, uh, subsection 4 states that all these three rules that we talked about when the goods have been supplied which are less than the contracted amount or they are larger than the con uh, contracted quantity or if there is a mismatch in the description or in the contract uh, and goods of different description are sent. So what are you going to do? You are either going to follow those three rules but if that particular industry or trade uh, has a specific usage which is different from what has been stipulated in the Sale of Goods Act you would be referring to whatever usage is there in that particular industry. 
So now installment deliveries. So you, you understand more what is installment? Installment is basically you are doing deliveries or you are making payments in parts and they essentially are of a periodic nature. So for example, when we say uh, EMI, what is EMI? It is easy monthly installments. So you are making payments per month for a particular thing that you buy until and unless you have paid the entire price, right? So that is how uh, delivery can also take place by way of installments. So the general rule is that unless otherwise agreed, the buyer of goods is not bound to accept delivery thereof for installments. Yani ki agar aapko delivery installments ke through karni hai aur aap seller ho, to aapko essentially apne contract mein mention karna padega ki delivery by way of installments hogi. Otherwise, the buyer is not bound to accept the delivery, the buyer can reject the delivery. So now, uh, what happens if there is a default on part of the buyer or the seller? Default kya hoga? Default ye ho sakta hai ki seller ne timely goods ko deliver nahi kara apni monthly date, whatever it was. And uh, what could be the default on part of the buyer that he is either not accepting the goods jab installments mein delivery ho rahi hai, yeah, he is not making the payment which is supposed to be made in installments. So let us have a look at section 38, subsection 2. It states that where there is a contract for the sale of goods to be delivered by stated installments which are to be separately paid for and the seller makes no delivery or defective delivery in respect of one or more installments or the buyer neglects or refuses to take delivery of or pay for one or more installments. It is a question in each case depending on the terms of the contract and the circumstances of the case whether the breach of contract is a repudiation of the whole contract or whether it is a severable breach giving rise to a claim for compensation but not to a right to treat the whole contract as repudiated. So here you need to understand the difference that you studied in your previous lecture about conditions and warranties. So what is a condition? Condition is basically a stipulation which is very important to the contract and the breach of which would amount to the repudiation of the contract. And what is a warranty? Warranty is basically a stipulation which is not so incidental to the contract that the breach thereof would lead to repudiation of the contract. So here what is it saying? If any of these circumstances like uh, if there was a defect on the delivery or if there was a defect in accepting the goods or making the payment for those goods in the installments. If they are of the nature of a condition then because it is a condition it may lead to repudiation of a contract. Otherwise if it is a warranty it will only lead to a right to sue for compensation. So now whether it would be a condition or a warranty would differ from case to case and it is a question of fact which is supposed to be determined based on the circumstances of the case. So now, um, it is not always that you are getting a delivery, right, by the seller himself. There may be a situation wherein you are actually ordering something, say, from a particular store in US. So how is it reaching you? You are buying something from New York, you are sitting here, say, in a part of India, and you are getting the goods here. So the person might be contacting a, uh, a courier service or any shipment service wherein the person sitting in New York is putting the goods into transit and then they are reaching you. So now, would, uh, what would be the situation when the goods have been sent to the carrier? Let us have a look. So where in pursuance of a contract of sale, the seller is authorized or required to send the goods to the buyer, delivery of the goods to a carrier, whether named by the buyer or not, for the purpose of transmission to the buyer or delivery of the goods to a warfinger for safe custody, is prima facie deemed to be a delivery of the goods to the buyer. So that would essentially mean that it is a deemed delivery. Aapke delivery abhi tak buyer ke paas hui nahi hai, but because it has been given to the carrier, we will consider it to be a deemed delivery. What should be the nature of the contract of the carrier with respect to the delivery of the goods? Well, unless otherwise authorized by the buyer, the seller shall make such contract with the carrier or warfinger on behalf of the buyer as may be reasonable, having regard to the nature of the goods and other circumstances of the case. So if the seller omits to do so and the goods are lost or damaged in course of transit or whilst the custody of the warfinger, the buyer may decline to treat the delivery of the carrier or warfinger as a delivery to himself or may hold the seller responsible in damages. So in a sense, what is this uh, subsection talking about? That you have, to make, you have to decide as to who would be the carrier. The seller has to decide that based on the circumstances of the case and also based on the nature of the goods. So for example, if you're living in India and you deal in certain perishable goods, say for example, you deal in import-export of certain exquisite flowers. Now flowers have a specific shelf life. And if you choose to uh, 
make the delivery through a carrier that is based via sea route. It is highly possible and uh, in almost all circumstances that your consignment would be damaged because of the nature of those particular goods. Because the goods are perishable, you would be requiring a faster mode of transportation. That would essentially be by airfare, right? So when you're supposed to choose which carrier is supposed to be there and, and what all would be the terms with respect to the contract with the carrier, they have to be reasonable, keeping in mind one, the conditions and circumstances of the particular case, and secondly, the nature of the goods supposed to be transited. So let us look at how transit by sea is supposed to take place. So in transit by sea, the, the, the general practice in the shipping industry is that you get your goods insured. Because if uh, the possibility of the goods getting a damage by way of sea and the possibility of them getting lost, because of the time taken during the sea transit is large, so because of that possibility, it is the general practice that the shipments are generally insured. So this states that unless otherwise agreed, where goods are sent by the seller to the buyer by a route involving sea transit, in circumstances in which it is usual to insure, the seller shall give such notice to the buyer as may enable him to insure them during their sea transit. And if the seller fails to do so, the goods shall be deemed to be at his risk during such sea transit. So that means, if you have any shipment pass kara, and that particular industry ki requirement or general practice is that you will insure the goods. So who is the responsibility to insure? This insurance will insure the buyer, hi lega, but it is the responsibility of the seller to inform the buyer about this particular concept of insurance by shipment. And if the goods are somehow damaged or buyer ko koi notice nahi milata through seller ki usko wo goods insure karane hain, tab these goods would be at the risk of the seller and it would be the seller who would be supposed to bear the losses suffered in that particular transaction. So now let us talk about risk where goods are delivered at a distant place. So where the seller of goods agrees to deliver them at his own risk at a place other than that where they are when sold, the buyer shall nevertheless, unless otherwise agreed, take any risk of deterioration in the goods necessarily incident to the course of transit. So if it is, uh, the, the risk has been taken by the seller, it should necessarily be taken by the seller. So let us talk about buyer's right of examining the goods. So where goods are delivered to the buyer which he has not previously examined, he is not deemed to have accepted them unless and until he has had the opportunity of examining them for the purpose of ascertaining whether they are in conformity with the contract. So that means when you were buying that particular goods, you were not given the opportunity to actually investigate whether the goods that you are wanting are matching the description which is mentioned in the contract of sale. So if you are taking a delivery without having that opportunity, then at the time of the delivery, you should have a reasonable opportunity to do so. Now secondly, unless otherwise agreed when the seller tenders delivery of goods to the buyer, he is bound on request to afford the buyer a reasonable opportunity of examining the goods for the purpose of ascertaining whether they are in conformity with the contract. So um, here the first thing was that uh, acceptance would happen only when examination has taken place. And secondly, uh, when the seller is tendering the delivery to the buyer, he is bound on request to afford the buyer a reasonable opportunity. So when the seller is making the delivery, he has to give the opportunity if requested by the buyer. Now let us talk about acceptance. So when we discuss the duties of a buyer and seller, with respect to buyer, we said it is the duty of the buyer to accept the goods and to pay the price thereof. So what is acceptance? The buyer is deemed to have accepted the goods when he intimates to the seller that he has accepted them or when the goods have been delivered to him and he does any act in relation to them which is inconsistent with the ownership of the seller or when after the lapse of reasonable time he retains the goods without intimating to the seller that he has rejected them. So first thing is, you directly seller ko ye bata rahe hai ki aapne un goods ko accept kar liya. Secondly, aap aisa kuch kar rahe hai jisse aap ye show karna cha rahe hai ki jo delivery hai, usse ownership aapke paas a gai hai. That means aapne delivery le li hai. So for example, if I purchase 10 pens and I don't communicate it to the seller that I am accepting the delivery of those particular goods, what is going to happen? Well, within the reasonable time, either I have to communicate the rejection or if I do something which is inconsistent with the ownership of the goods being vested in the seller. Jaysay ki agar mein un 10 pens ko aage further resell kar dhu. Ya mein unko use karne lag chau. 
दैट मीन्स मैं ये शो कर रही हूँ कि ओनरशिप मैंने ले ली है दैट मीन्स मैंने एक्सेप्ट कर लिया है गुड्स को एंड थर्डली या तो आपने एक रीजनेबल टाइम लैप्स हो गया है और आपने कम्युनिकेट नहीं करा है कि आप उन गुड्स को रिजेक्ट कर रहे हो नाउ बायर इज नॉट बाउंड टू रिटर्न द रिजेक्टेड गुड्स सो अनलेस अदरवाइज अग्रीड वेर गुड्स आर डिलीवर टू द बायो एंड ही रिफ्यूज टू एक्सेप्ट देम हैविंग द राइट सो टू डू ही इज नॉट बाउंड टू रिटर्न दैम टू द सेलर बट इट इज सफिशेंट इफ ही इंटरमिट्स टू द सेलर दैट ही रिफ्यूज टू एक्सेप्ट दैम सो देखो अगर किसी की सिचुएशन में बायर के पास गुड्स आ तो गए हैं बट उसने अगर एक्सेप्ट नहीं करा तो उसकी ड्यूटी नहीं है कि वो उन गुड्स को वापस रिटर्न करे अगर उसने सिर्फ सेलर को ये इंटरमेट कर दिया ये इन्फॉर्मेशन दे दी कि वो गुड्स को रिजेक्ट कर रहा है दैट इज सफिशियंट सो फाइनली लेट इस लुक एट द लाइबिलिटी ऑफ द बायर फॉर निग्लेक्टिंग और रिफ्यूजिंग द डिलीवरी ऑफ गुड्स सी वेन द सेलर इज रेडी एंड विलिंग टू डिलीवर द गुड्स एंड रिक्वेस्ट द बायर टू टेक द डिलीवरी एंड द बायर डज नॉट विद इन अ रीजनेबल टाइम आफ्टर सच रिक्वेस्ट टेक डिलीवरी ऑफ द गुड्स ही इज लाइबल टू द सेलर फॉर एनी लॉस ओकेजन by his neglect or refusal to take delivery and also for reasonable charge for the care and custody of the goods and there is a proviso to this section that states that nothing in this section shall affect the rights of the seller with a neglect or refusal of the buyer to take the delivery amounts to repudiation of a contract so what is it trying to say here ki man lo main ek buyer hu maine goods ka acceptance nahi liya maine unki delivery nahi li to do possibility ho sakti hain uski wajah se ek to seller ko kuch damages honge एंड थर्डली क्या पता गुड्स का नेचर ऐसा हो कि उनकी केयर एंड प्रोटेक्शन के लिए उसको एक्स्ट्रा चार्जेस इनकर करने पड़े सो बिकॉज आई हैव नॉट एक्सेप्टेड द गुड्स और मैंने उनकी डिलीवरी नहीं ली है सो इट वुड बी माई लाइबिलिटी टू पे फॉर द डैमेजेस ओकेजन टू हिम एंड ऑल्सो टू एनी ऑफ द चार्जेस दैट द सेलर हैज पेड विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टेकिंग द कस्टडी एंड टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दोज गुड्स बट इसमें एक प्रोविजो है वो ये बोलता है कि अगर कोई ऐसी कंडीशन है जिससे कि कॉन्ट्रैक्ट रिपोर्डिएट हो रहा है then because of repudiation what will happen the seller's right to repudiate and his remedies with respect to that particular thing will still be intact so students in this lecture we have discussed about the performance of a contract we discussed the duties of a buyer and seller we discussed what is delivery and what are the rules pertaining to delivery we also discussed when the quantity which has not been stipulated has been passed on and delivered in the contract of sale then we discuss the situation with respect to delivery by installments finally we discuss the liabilities with respect to the seller and the buyer and especially with respect to the buyer what are the liabilities of the buyer when because of his neglect or refusal to accept the goods the seller is suffering some loss so students that's it for this topic of performance of contracts please stay tuned to estran academy to cover your syllabus for business regulatory framework and for detailed video lectures thank you If you want to study this topic in detail refer to the book by S John Publishing and Vikas Publishing House link is provided in the description box If you found our video interesting please like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.